The Mekong River is the longest river in Southeast Asia. Its drainage basin passes through China, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam, and finally forms the rich Mekong River Delta in Vietnam. A long time ago, the delta once belonged to Cambodia, but it was seized by Vietnam after the historical war. To this day, Vietnam's largest city, Ho Chi Minh City, is located on this delta. The river network here is intertwined like a lifeline, forming a transportation hub with waterways extending in all directions, and Vietnam therefore controls the strategic location of the Mekong River Basin's outlet to the sea. But for Cambodia, this geographical layout creates significant development constraints. You must know that the country does not have inland waterways directly leading to the ocean, and all goods shipped from Cambodia must go to Vietnam at the same time. This means that Vietnam controls Cambodia's water logistics and trade to some extent. If this continues in the long term, this will be very detrimental. In order to break this situation, Cambodia proposed the idea of building a 180-kilometer long super canal. In October last year, Cambodia successfully signed an important agreement with China to invest 1.7 billion US dollars in the construction of Drexel Funan Canal. Once completed, the 180-kilometer canal will open up a water shipping channel for Cambodia and get rid of its dependence on Vietnam's waterways. For China, the project could also provide a new outlet for its creations. So, how will the construction of this canal affect Cambodia's future? How will China gain huge benefits from this project? If you find today's video interesting, be sure to subscribe to the Insider Truth channel so you won't miss any exciting videos. Now let's get into today's topic. Currently, Cambodia has a total length of 1,750 kilometers of rivers, but only 780 kilometers of these rivers are suitable for navigation by ships. Among these navigable river sections, the Mekong River accounts for 30%, becoming the country's most important shipping river. In addition, Cambodia's Tunnel Sap River and Bays River also accounted for 15% and 5% respectively. But unlike the Mekong River, these rivers are poorly connected and flow in different directions, which limits the efficiency of Cambodia's overall transportation network. For Cambodia, the Mekong River is not only the only outlet to the sea, but also an important artery for its economy. However, since the outlet of this river is located near Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, this means that many Cambodian export goods must pass through the Vietnamese section of the Mekong River before reaching the international market. Although Cambodia has built key ports such as Phnom Penh Port and Sihanoukville, these ports have not fully utilized the Mekong River waterway network. Compared with other countries, the cost of container transportation in Cambodia is about twice that of Thailand and Vietnam. It costs about 1,200 US dollars in logistics fees to handle a 40-foot container, and the cost of cargo clearance is four to five times more expensive than in other countries. Vietnam also relies on its own geographical advantages to earn hundreds of millions of dollars in tolls from Cambodia every year. What's more serious is that Cambodia, as a country with backward infrastructure, currently has only more than 600 kilometers of railways and only two expressways, one of which is still under construction connecting Phnom Penh and Bavay. This makes it difficult for Cambodia to efficiently transport export goods to its ports by land, road or rail. If Cambodia wants to develop its economy in the future, it must solve the problem of water transportation and logistics. As early as 2022, Cambodia launched a national comprehensive development plan. This plan is committed to comprehensively improving the country's transportation system, covering all aspects of waterways, seas, land, and air. The plan covers 102 road and railway construction projects, 23 inland canal projects, 20 maritime transportation projects, and 10 air transportation projects. Among the many projects, the Drexel Funan Canal project, which is approximately 180 kilometers long, is the most important. 
As far as I know, the total length of Drexel Funan Canal is about more than 180 kilometers and will span Kandal, Takeo, Kampot, and Kep provinces in Cambodia. Its berth will connect the Phnom Penh port in Xi'an County and the seaport in Kep province, opening up a new logistics and trade lifeline. It is expected that the canal will be officially constructed by China in June this year. In terms of the design of the canal, the width of the upstream part is set at 100 meters, while the downstream part is expanded to 800 meters wide. This design enables the canal to adapt to the passage of 3,000-ton cargo ships, which is of great significance for improving regional logistics and trade. But building a huge canal is not an easy task. It not only requires a huge investment of 1.7 billion US dollars, but also requires the completion of the construction of three canal navigation stations and 11 cross-river bridges in just four years. Both the complexity of the project and the amount of work are very challenging. In order to successfully complete the construction of the canal project, Cambodia's new Prime Minister Hun Manai extended an invitation to China for cooperation. In October 2023, Hong Manai participated in the Belt and Road Cooperation Forum held by China. During this period, the two parties reached a cooperation agreement on the Funan Techo Canal project, and China invested 1.7 billion US dollars to build the canal. In order to repay China, Hun Sen decided to transfer the operation and management rights of Defu Canal to Chinese companies after its completion for a period of approximately 40 to 50 years. This also means that a series of income such as tolls generated during the operation of Defu Canal will be collected by Chinese companies and the profits will be distributed according to established proportions. After the contract expires, China will need to hand over the management of Defu Canal to the Cambodian government. According to expert predictions, once the Funan Techo Canal project is completed and put into operation, it will connect Cambodia's previously invested 1.5 billion US dollars in the Kampot Deepwater Port, thus opening up the Mekong River water transportation system and Cambodia's maritime routes, and saving up to 16% of water transportation cost. But the impact of the Funan Techo Canal project goes beyond that. It is also expected to shorten transportation time and distance, while promoting the development of agriculture, irrigation, aquaculture, and animal husbandry in areas along the line, bringing about 1.6 million residents along the coast. To obtain direct or indirect economic benefits. For China, although it costs 1.7 billion US dollars to build the canal, the final reward is definitely more valuable. So, how will China reap huge benefits from this project? For a long time, China, as a global manufacturing power, has mainly relied on ports in its southeastern coastal areas for its exports of goods. However, with the in-depth implementation of the Belt and Road Initiative, the Drexel Funan Canal project has opened up a new strategic channel for China, especially for inland provinces such as Yunnan, Kunming, and other regions. This new canal provides a direct outlet to the sea. This important infrastructure project not only significantly reduces transportation costs and risks, but also greatly shortens cargo transportation time, thereby enhancing the competitiveness of Chinese products. More importantly, within the 50 years that China has the right to operate the canal, they will fully utilize the waterway to strengthen trade links with Southeast Asia, South Asia, Africa and Europe, and further expand their economic influence. From a long-term perspective, China has invested 1.7 billion US dollars in building the canal, and the returns will definitely be greater in the future. However, since the project was proposed, Vietnam has aroused concerns and even expressed a strong obstructive attitude towards Cambodia's plan. What is going on? Since Cambodia announced the construction of the Defu Canal project, Vietnam has reacted particularly strongly. Because the construction of Defu Canal means that Cambodia will have an independent maritime transportation channel, this is undoubtedly a huge economic blow to Vietnam. Currently, cargo ships entering and exiting Phnom Penh need to pass through Khmer Port in Vietnam. This geographical advantage allows Vietnam to obtain substantial toll revenue from it. 
But once the canal is completed, this revenue will cease to exist. In addition to economic benefits, the construction of Defu Canal will also reshape the strategic pattern of the region. Vietnam has long had significant influence in Cambodia, and the new canal will enhance Cambodia's regional status and reduce its dependence on Vietnam. The Cambodian people are no longer under the control of Vietnam, whether in terms of trade or quality of life. At the same time, the Defu Canal project symbolizes the deepening of China's One Belt, One Road initiative in Cambodia. This is not only the construction of a transportation channel, but also a transfer of political and economic influence. As more infrastructure projects like Defu Canal are implemented in Cambodia, China's influence in the region will gradually increase, and Vietnam's traditional status will also be greatly challenged. So what do you think? Before we end today's video, remember to hit that shiny subscribe button. This way you will receive more insider information on projects as soon as possible. Looking forward to sharing with you next time.